and welcome back to Let's Play Persona 3. Last time, we spent a lot of time working on our social life, though not all that much time fighting things by the light of the moon. But, that mysterious boy did give us a warning about the full moon approaching, and the full moon, or rather, the waxing moon, has been a prominent part of the UI, so perhaps something interesting will happen soon enough, soon enough. Before we get into the details of the day, let's talk with our friends a little bit. You probably think I'm making a big deal out of nothing, but this downtime is driving me nuts. Seriously, why do bones take so long to heal? I, I feel you there, man. I, when I was a kid, I broke my collarbone. The recovery period was brutal, especially since I was four <laughs> and uh, felt a lot longer than it probably was. Kirijo's senpai is gorgeous, but man, she's real scary, too. But it's true the number of cases around here has been going up. Does it feel right to sit tight and do nothing at a time like this? I'm sure, in due time, we'll find something that we can do, Junpei. I mean, I was just having that spiel about the moon earlier. Come on, look up. I think things are gonna get exciting soon. Mitsuru, what's up? So, we just wanted to chat? Ah, Kahiko, what is he thinking, suggesting that? Clearly it's high time I reestablish some ground rules. Things are about to get rough for Akihiko. Now, I do want to head to the Polonia Mall, and I want to go to the Velvet Room. Uh, coming up with our the social link I want to do tomorrow, we're actually going to need our persona, or a matching persona, going forward. Uh, specifically, we are going to be working on the Magician social link. I can see that you are living quite the fulfilling life between nurturing your bonds and striving for self-improvement. This is less of a reward and more of a gift from me to you. Please take it. And we get a handful of more Twilight Fragments for our efforts. I still cannot foresee the limits of your potential. I look forward to witnessing you grow even further. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now, what we need from Elizabeth, of course, is to get the persona that I was talking about. We're going to be working on the Magician Link tomorrow, so let's get the cheapest Magician we can. In this case, Nekomata. I am burning quite a bit of funds on... Uh, compendium costs right now to uh, expand my roster, but once we get past the full moon, we're actually going to get an opportunity for some additional funds outside of Tartarus, so I should be fine. I should come into uh, possession of some things that I can sell if I need to, plus just some general opportunities to make some more money outside of uh, killing things in Tartarus. Tonight we want to go to the high school or the arcade to play High School of Youth so we can work on our charm a little bit. I'm sure these skills will eventually translate into real life. I hope, anyway. Class has ended for today, and like I said previously, we're going to advance the Magician Social Link and hang out with Kenji for a bit. We've been neglecting him a little bit in Reload, he's only at rank 2, and we have the most important building block of a lasting friendship, the matching persona. Oh, Zeller. I was just thinking, I bet Takeba-san has some pretty high standards, huh? Probably have to be a real Prince Charming if you want to get her attention. Well, not like it matters to me, anyway. Not really interested in her. By the way, you heading out? Got nothing to do today. Again. Looks like Tomochika wants to hang out. I feel as if we can grow closer thanks to the magician persona, Nakamada. I feel like I might grow closer to him soon as well. Should I spend some time? I think that would be delightful. Ooh, lucky me. Let's go somewhere then. And it's gotta be you know where. Despite its simple appearance, the soup has a complex flavor that it's enhanced by the noodles. Man, I'm so sick of this, dude. Of what? Life? Life? Dude, you watch too much reality TV. But I guess, yeah, you could say I'm sick of life. I mean, I get up, go to school, sit through lame-ass lectures, eat, watch TV, and go to bed. Okay, that settles it. I'm gonna get myself a girlfriend. Right now! Alright, man, good luck. I think you can do it. What a cool thing to say! Soon, I'll have a girlfriend and be just as cool as you. Alright, I think I'm gonna pull the trigger on my secret plan. I told you about the teacher, right? I'm gonna ask her out and 
get her to fall in love with me. Her name is Miss Kano. You heard of her? She teaches third year ethics. We get along pretty well. She's not mainstream beautiful, but she's really pretty. She's got these cute little eyes and a sexy body. Uh, don't tell anyone about this, okay? You're the only one who knows. Tomochika told me more about his plan. I feel like our relationship is stronger. And indeed it is. We even have a numerical value to signify that. Rank 3 for Magician. Dude, I'm getting so psyched. Let's cook up a plan of attack. Cook up a plan of attack? Maybe you're the one watching too much TV. Regardless, Tomochika and I chatted on the walk home. Welcome back. It's odd, really, how quiet it's been. It's been a month, but I can hardly believe that will be the last time they appear outside Tartarus. Yeah. I agree. There's been a sharp rise in the Lost recently. I wouldn't be surprised if something happened. The mysterious boy I saw during the Dark Hour warned of an ordeal in one week. Tomorrow will mark exactly one week since then. I should prepare myself today. And this is our warning that we will not be able to make any purchases tomorrow if we want to upgrade our equipment. Akihiko, what's going on? As Mitsuru says, this is quiet is certainly odd. I have a feeling something big is on its way. Zeller, get as ready as you can. What about you, Mitsuru? What have you got for us? Hmm? Something the matter? Just wanted to chat. I'll need to further improve my detection ability to pick up on less conspicuous abnormalities. I'll do my best, but this will likely take some time. In lieu of being able to fully rely on my abilities, try to prepare for all contingencies. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. And if I fail, I can of course rewind time with my uh, protagonist powers. Hey, don't you think there's been way too many apathy syndrome cases lately? Wouldn't it be real bad if we don't do anything about it? I guess all we can do right now is focus on beating up the Shadows and Tartarus. Jinpei is surprisingly conscientious about that. I wouldn't have taken him for someone who was uh, that up-to-date on the current problems facing the city. Now, since we only have this one opportunity to shop, why don't we take a look at uh, Officer Kurosawa's wares and see if we can get anything better off, off of him. I'm ashamed to admit it, but there isn't much we adults can do for you when it really counts. Now then, I don't have much, but you should be able to find what you need. Let's take a look at uh, his accessories here. Let's see. So I've got this, uh, what, this micro sash, which gives me extra HP, which I think is good enough. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at uh, Junpei Yukari. Okay, they got that. Uh, do I actually want to buy anything? Uh, let's just take a look at the armors here. Uh, all this stuff is too expensive. Honestly, I should be fine with what I got here, but I actually am going to make one change up to Yukari. I'm going to buy her a... where is it? A guard band. That would help her out quite a bit. And it's not that expensive, so we'll get her that. That's all I really care to get, and we'll move on out from here. Moving on, we actually do not want to do anything in Polonia Mall tonight. We're going to Ida Iwatode Strip Mall because there is a new location for us to patronize. So, on the second floor of the Strip Mall, there is the restaurant Wakatsu Kitchen. Prodigy Platter, 680 yen. Get smarter while you digest. Eating here might help with my academics. At Wakatsu Kitchen, you can order the Prodigy Platter, rich in omega-3s, to help raise your academics. Time will pass if you eat here. If you come on certain nights, there may be new items on the menu that aren't normally available, giving us a clue to the secret menu item. Eating at Wakatsu gives us plus three to our academics over the plus two we'd get by studying, which, uh... Boy, that makes me feel silly for worrying about my academics when I was in school. I could have just been eating sushi the whole time, and I would become a genius in no time. Regular customers ordering the seafood full course. Seems like special a special offer for regulars on Monday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday nights. Maybe if my charm was at least confident, I'd be a memorable enough customer to be able to order it. We'll have to keep that in mind. For right now, though, we just ordered the Prodigy Platter. I wonder what's in this food. I feel like my mind is clearer than usual. And we get our plus three academics. We're uh, moving slightly beyond being a slacker. As you can see, we are confident, so we should have that secret menu item in no time. 
Meanwhile, in FES, we're actually going to be changing things up a little bit going forward. I've checked the calendar, and I counted out the amount of points I can get in Courage if I attend uh, the arcade to play Horror House every night between now and when we need to max out our Courage, and there is more than enough points now from just Horror House alone that I can max out Courage for the time when we need it maxed out. I probably will steal, still seek out uh, Courage boosts when I can get them from the Tiredness stat, Status, but I can now transition into focusing on other stats, again, so long as I make sure to play Horror House every night that it's available, and that should be no problem working into the schedule. So for now, we're going to be uh, playing arcade games to focus on our other uh, stats when Horror House isn't available, such as Print Club to get our charm worked on, because we do need to max out that stat net. Uh, the next after uh, Courage, and not that long after. We need to have it maxed out by the 25th of July, so good idea to start working on it now, now that I know I can easily max out uh, my Courage within the allotted time frame. Meanwhile, uh, during the night, uh, we do get a phone call, but uh, I'm just going to ignore it. It's Kenji. He wants to bug us so many times. Kenji, I'm busy. And I'm going to uh, study tonight, even though we've already been sick twice. In Persona 3 FES, it is possible for sickness to persist a third day. We'll see if I get that luck and I can get another free courage boost, but uh, I'm not totally banking on it, so it's not a huge deal if I don't. Unfortunately, my sickness did not pers persist, so no free Courage boost today. But again, as long as I make Horror House every time, shouldn't be a big deal. We're going to be hanging out with Kenji today, and this social link is notable. Hey, by the way, have you ever heard about our school's Gourmet King? Well, I heard he knows more about food than anyone. People are always asking him for recommendations on where to eat. Well, I major in noodles, so there's nothing you can tell me about ramen that I don't already know. I mean, I heard he goes to Hagakure and orders rice-based dishes. What a loser! <laughs> Guess he's really into sandwiches now, so he's always hanging out around Pol Polonia Mall. I wonder who he is. You have obtained information about the Gourmet King. This is the lead for the Moon social link, and now we can find him hanging out at Polonia Mall, though it'll be quite some time in FES before we start that social link. And by quite some time, I mean we probably won't be seeing him until around the end of the game. But nobody really likes the Gourmet King anyway, so I'm sure that's not going to be any real loss with the quality of the videos. Anyways, that was not the unique thing I was trying to draw attention to with the social link. Uh, don't worry, it won't take long. Kenji looks very serious. What's uh, unique about uh, this one is that if we did not have our Magician Arcana Persona, Nekomata, for the previous rank, we would not be able to get the rank up event here with Kenji. So that's just something I want to draw attention to. We are hitting the point where we need to have matching Persona to keep these links moving at the uh, necessary time or the necessary rate of time. And I do want to emphasize that when those uh, milestones come up. Anyways. Alright, cutting ahead to the dorm, because there is actually something I want to comment on that's specific to vanilla and FES. If we were to go to Tartarus tonight, and I'm not going to, but if we were, remember that when your party members get tired in Tartarus, they will automatically leave you when you return to the lobby. Well, on the nights before the full moon, this does not happen. You're still susceptible to the tiredness status on the night before the full moon, but your party will not ditch you once they reach that status, and you can grind to your heart's content on the nights prior to a full moon. There is a very particular reason for this mechanic to be in place, but uh, we'll go over that in due time. For now, though... We're going to be playing Horror House, of course. We need to hit up every single opportunity we can to play this game, because we need the courage. I'll also be studying, since my co I recovered from my cold, so I can do that today, getting a small boost of academics along the way. I'd highly, highly, highly recommend you save your progress on this night, if you don't save your progress every day to begin with, because, uh, well, again, we'll be getting into that when it becomes relevant. For Persona 3 Portable, it'll be the same again on our stat developments, we'll be doing the Print Club once again, and become just a little bit more charming due to how photogenic we are, to the point where we go from Ingenue, uh, thanks to the person who pointed out uh, how to pronounce that, it was right after they pointed that out to me that I realized, oh, it's the root word for ingenuity, I, I never thought about that, but now we're unique, which I think is uh, much easier for a ignoramus like me to understand.
And actually, on the 8th, uh, we actually have a new event that doesn't happen in Persona 3 FES or Reload happen. Miss Toriyumi approaches us. Ah, there you are, Colin san I would like a word with you. You haven't joined any committees yet, have you? I know this is sudden, but there's some positions that just become vi became vacant that I'd like you to take on. I mean, students are obligated to join a school committee. I'll let you choose which one you'd like to join. Which of these would you rather join? The school health committee or the library committee? Well, uh, I, I kind of like reading, so let's go with the library committee. Like so many other choices in Persona 3 where you get an option for a different way to tackle a social link, this does not actually affect anything with the link. It just uh, creates a different backdrop. Let's go with the library committee, though. All right, thank you. Well, go on over to the library after school today. You joined the library committee. You must go to library after school is out today. And yes, we are immediately whisked away to the library. But there is some benefits to losing our Friday like this. Gekakon High School Library. Is everyone here? Allow me to introduce Zoe Collins from Class 2F to you. She'll be joining the library committee. If there's anything you don't understand... Oh, let's see. Asagawa! Yes, ma'am? You're on duty today, right? Teach her how to get around here. Well then, I'll leave the rest to you. Understood. Well then, could you come over here so I can explain? Um, Saori-san? Excuse me, but we, um... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice. Please feel free to go home. I'll take care of the rest for today. We're really sorry. See you later. The other members leave. Oh, please don't think that the others aren't welcoming you to the club. They're just very busy. Um, let's see. Where should I start explaining things to you? Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't even introduced myself yet. I'm Saori Hasegawa. I'm very pleased to meet you, Saori. Heh, there's no need to be so formal. I'm a junior, just like you. You don't have to be so polite to me. Mm, but that senior a moment ago. Did you notice? I'm actually two years older than you. I studied abroad and took some time off from school. I'm the oldest student in the school right now. That's why the upperclassmen all speak politely to me. I really wish they'd stop, but I've pretty much given up about it. Still, considering that we've just met, it'd be nice if you didn't feel like you had to be like that around me. Could you just try? Of course I can! Heh, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. You joined the school library committee and met Saori Hasegawa, a fellow junior. You get a mature and quiet impression of Saori, probably because she's older than you. And that is not all, because Saori actually is the fill-in for the Hermit Arcana. No gaming for the Femsi, thou art I, and now I am thou. Thou hast established a new bond. Thou shalt be blessed when creating Personas of the Hermit Arcana. There we go. Nothing much to say about the Hermit Arcana here, it's much like it was in Persona 3 FES. There are some changes to some of the Arcanas in Portable, but we have yet to really see any of them. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to explain our duties here. We meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we do get a couple of days off before exams. Oh no, Junpei's got competition on the schedule now, sorry about that hiccup. First, let's go over how to check our books out. Each book has a barcode on the back cover, so... You were taught the skills you need in order to perform your duties as a member of the library committee. You spent time with Saturday in the library until it was time to leave. Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry, I keep repeating Mitsuru there because I don't expect her to chime in. But uh, she says uh, much the same that she did in Reload. Uh, slightly different, of course, due to some script changes, but it's nothing too terribly interesting. It's just apathy syndrome. Anyways, with that taken care of, we uh, once again do what we do in Persona 3 FES, and that is go to the arcade and get a little spooked, just so we can be a bit more courageous down the line. Yo, Zeller. How's it going? Do you feel like you're getting stronger after every battle? 
Yeah, actually, I feel uh, quite a bit more powerful than when I started. Great. Keep it up. Keep on training. With real battle experience, you'll be ready for whatever comes our way. I'll be fully recovered in no time, so you can count on me to help out on the front lines. But don't let your guard down, just because I got your back. Still, I would like to defer to your experience a little bit, Akihiko. Class has ended for today. There will be a full moon tonight. It is the day I was forewarned about. I wonder if something will happen. I should probably head back to the dorm, just in case. And yes, we lose today in order to account for the mysterious full moon occurrence. You're still at it? Yes. You never know when an enemy might appear. But I thought you couldn't scan outside of Tartarus. To be honest, I am indeed lacking in that area. Maybe this is the best Penthesilea can do in terms of data gathering. Though I must say, the power of Persona seems to be much more diverse than I once thought. We even have someone who can switch Personas in the midst of battle. There's something special about his ability. And it hasn't even been that long since his awakening. Yeah, I was surprised too. But in the end, it's up to him whether or not he reaches his full potential. Hmm? It's a shadow. What? You actually found one? Wait, something's not right. The reading is too big. I've never detected an enemy of this size. Wait, is it like that huge one from last month? I think so. Oh, well then. This is gonna be fun. I'll wake up the others. We're here. Where is it? I'll whip it a new one. We've detected a shadow outside of Tartarus. We don't know for sure, but we think it's another big one like we saw last month. We must defeat any we find out there as quickly as possible. People may not be aware of the Dark Hour's existence, but if the city is destroyed during that time, inconsistencies will be left behind. That's one way to put it, Mitsuru. In other words, we need to kick some ass, right? Well, count me in. Junpei... Akihiko, you stay here and wait for the chairman. What? Are you kidding? I'm going. You still need time to recover. Like this, you'd only get in the way. What you say? They'll fare better than you in your current state. Have faith in them, Akihiko. They've already seen battle firsthand. Damn it. Relax. I've got it covered. <sighs> Guess I don't have a choice. You're in charge. Him again? Can you do it? I'll do my best. You can count on me. Good. We're counting on you. At this rate, you'll be stuck playing leader forever. I mean, not like I care. I know you can do this. Guess it's pretty much decided that you're our leader, huh? Even when I'm the only guy in the group. Whether one is a man or a woman doesn't factor into it. The responsibility falls to those who have the gift. And let me add, if you ever say or do anything to condescend to her because she's a woman... Oh, no, 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 no. It's not like I look down on her or anything. You should let the three of them go first. You need to get ready, right? Yes. Let's rendezvous in front of the station. Got it. All right, let's go. Where is she? She'll be here soon. There's a full moon tonight. Looks even creepier during the dark hour. Huh? What the? Sorry to keep you waiting. Where is she? She'll be here soon.
there's a full moon tonight. But it looks even creepier during the dark hour. Huh? What the? Sorry to keep you waiting. Listen carefully. Tonight, I'll be providing support from here. Everything else is the same. The Shadow is currently located on a monorail not far from the station. To get there, you'll have to walk on the tracks. Uh, are you serious? Isn't that... dangerous? Not to worry. Electronic equipment is rendered inoperable during the dark hour, including trains. But... your bike? This was specially made to handle it. Now, if circumstances change, I'll notify you immediately. All right, let's get started. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Holy hell, we are real high up. I think I'm gonna hurt. <sighs> What even? There should be a monorail about 200 meters ahead from where you are now. Get there as quickly as you can. We don't want any passengers to get hurt. You know, we don't ever get any more insight on Mitsuru's bike that is able to function during the dark hour. Uh, sorry, I thought Junbei was saying something there. I mean, I, I assume it's made by the Kurijo group. I, I just kind of... I kind of wish we got more insight into the kind of tech that was used to make it. Although, based on what I know about the story, I can kind of guess about the, uh, guess, uh, what, uh, lines it was made along. Sorry, they, they keep popping in and I, I keep thinking, like, is there dialogue? Should I shut up? It's worth noting that in Persona 3 Portable, there's no segment where you walk on the tracks and actually get to take in the city during the dark hour. Kind of disappointing, honestly. Can you all hear me? Yes, loud and clear. We just got here, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. The readings are definitely coming from that monorail. Proceed with caution and stay together. <laughs> My persona is just itching for a fight. Well then, let's head on in. Don't you dare look up. Yeah, yeah, I won't. Uh, hmm. But uh, don't blame me if I happen to catch a glimpse. Say, why don't we dig Junpei a nice grave? So, that's, uh, a person, right? Like a passenger? Even transmogged. Yippee. But these guys aren't gonna remember a thing of all this, yeah? Probably better that way. Huh? Damn! It won't open! What's wrong? What happened? It looks like we're trapped inside. It must be the shadow. It knows you're there. Be ready for anything. Stay on full alert. Roger. Oh, joy. Looks like things are getting a little bit more complicated. Wonder, uh, so... what we have to say about the coffins here. I'm gonna pop open and jump scare us, is it? Junpei, this is not Five Nights at Persona 3, please. It's too quiet here. Moving on into the next car. Huh? Where are all the shadows? Damn. I was all ready to go and everything. This place is so creepy. Wouldn't take the shadows for subterfuge. Maybe they're just deeper in. Hey, I think I see something over there. Hey! Get back here! Wait! 
The enemy is acting strangely. I have a bad feeling about this. If you don't go after it, we're gonna lose it! You're in command right now. What do you think of the situation? I think this is a bit strange. We don't have any confirmation that the uh, shadows are capable of forming meaningful plans, but I don't know. Uh, they're acting a little too suspicious. Let's uh, be careful and stick together. I agree. It would be dangerous to chase after it blindly. So what if it's dangerous? We can't just stand here and let it get away. We can beat that thing, no problem. Hell. Do it myself! Dear Pei, wait! Watch out, it's behind you! Well, this is already off to a rough start, but these guys should be no problem to us. Most of the enemies that we can encounter here, and yes, we will be encountering some enemies along the way, not just a boss fight, are weak to Zeo spells and reload. So, we can just nail these guys with Zeo and go for the all-out attack. There we go, easy peasy. Ooh, hey, level up for Yukari as well. And, ooh, super convenient. She just happened to get Medea here. That'll make things a lot simpler. This is just what the enemy wants. There's not much we can do about it now. You have to go after him or you'll be picked off one by one. Damn it, Junpei, what are you thinking? From what I can tell, he's only a few cars ahead. Okay, we'll catch up to... Now get out of our way! We got a new enemy in the back there, Heat Balance. These guys are resistant to fire and ice, but weak to wind and elect. So, once again, we can just spam Zeo over and over and win this fight, no problem. But yeah, Yukari learning Medea here is actually super helpful for uh, the timing that she learns it. And she does not learn that spell until much, much later in the other versions of the game. She doesn't learn until level 23 in uh, FES and Reload, which is honestly kind of well past the point where it's of any value to you. So uh, much, much uh, better time for her to get it in this version of the game. I'd just like to point out that in Persona 3 FES and Portable, these enemies here give you ridiculous amounts of experience as a way to catch you up if you didn't do too much leveling in Tartarus. Uh, this is related to what I was talking about earlier where you don't suffer from the Tartarus or the Tired status on nights before the full moon. Since you're going to be forced into some combat anyway, uh, they give you ample opportunities to train yourself up if you are behind. Gotta bring up the, uh, first instance of Yukari's pet name for Junpei. What's up with Junpei? Did something happen? Yeah, we better catch up with him. I honestly wasn't expecting to get Medea here. I was, uh, thinking I'd have to do the boss fight without it, but I, I, it should be manageable. We're pretty strong at this point. Though, I will say, uh, in Reload, this boss can actually throw you for a loop. Strange, wasn't he? Why'd he snap and get so upset? Well, I guess we can ask him once we've caught up to him. Let's go. Is it a spoiler to say we'll be having a boss fight? I don't think so. Anyways, let's catch up with Junpei. There he is! Oh no, he's surrounded by enemies! We gotta help him, quick! Junpei! I've got it under control! Let's go! Funnily enough, in Persona 3 FES, Junpei is actually animated fighting with the shadows here, although I admit it is not exactly the most well choreographed action sequence I've ever seen.
Alright, this is nothing too complicated. The only thing to keep in mind here is that the enemy on the right is not weak to elect. Instead, we want to nail him with an Agi spell. Not that that's something we're incapable of. Orpheus, I've kitted him out to cover almost anything. Uh, the only thing he is lacking is uh, the ability to hit... Uh, darkness weaknesses, which is not a big deal, and we got Onmaraki for that, so we're all good with uh, Orpheus. Kind of a lame that we don't get the all-out attack cards for this. Nice! Level up for Junpei as well. See? That's what happens when you don't listen. Well, are you okay? <sighs> of course I am! I was doing just fine. Hey, what's your problem? Be careful, you three. I don't detect any movement, but stay alert. Whoa, what the? Why are we moving? It looks like the entire monorail is under the shadow's control. What? Is that really okay? Uh, this doesn't look good. If we don't stop it, it's going to crash into the next train. Crash? Hey, what are we gonna do? Calm down and listen. I detect a powerful reading in the front car that must be our target. You'll have to defeat that to stop the runaway train. Crap! What kind of messed up ride is this? Alright, more enemies that are weak to more of the same, so once again we want to hit this guy in the back with Zeo, and then hit those uh, two dancing hands with some fire spells. But I'm actually going to shift to Junpei here, because I do want to uh, keep some MP in reserve, or I'm sorry, SP in reserve for my protagonist, just in case we end up running a little tight in the boss fight, because we are going to need quite a bit of MP for, uh, I keep saying MP, SP, for the Tarunda spell, because it is super critical that we keep the boss's offense, off offensive capabilities to a minimum. You won. Now let's move on. There's no time. Run. One thing to note in Persona 3 FES is that as soon as we reunite with Junpei and the cutscene concludes and throws us into another battle, we have an 8 minute time limit. When this time limit expires, we get a game over and it is constantly ticking down, both in battle and out of battle. Uh, I believe the pause menu does uh, stop it so you can reorganize your equipment and your personas if you need to, but otherwise this is ticking down and again, if it expires, we get a game over and we do not get any more time to work with, so we gotta move quick. Hey, level up! That's a nice thing about the generous amount of experience points we get from all these enemies. I would just like to say that the UI for the time limit doesn't really look quite as cool in Persona 3 Portable. Alright, let's hurry up and get on to the Shadow. We don't have much time to screw around, as Mitsuru said. Who knows when this train might crash. Come on, get to the front car. Your primary target is up ahead. Are you ready? Is it just me or does this door look a little icy? No time to worry about that. We also have enemies patrolling the cars in Persona 3 FES, and it's pretty much unavoidable to fight them, and in fact it's pretty likely that they'll get enemy advantage on us since, uh, well, it's pretty difficult to, uh, maneuver around them in these narrow train cars. Fortunately for us, these are a bunch of weak, cowardly Mayas, so we can just rush these guys down. There it is! What the hell is this? That's our target? It has to be. There's nowhere else to go. Approaching the other train. Hurry! Hurry? What are we even supposed to do here? <laughs> oh. 
And now we are thrust into battle with the High Priestess. I've never seen one this big before, but there's no time. We have to end this now. Now in Reload, our countdown to the crash begins now, but we've got a super generous 30 minutes to work with. There's absolutely no way this fight can take us that much time, so let's get to work. As I said previously, we want to keep the boss's offensive capabilities to a minimum, so we'll want to keep Tarunda going on her at all times. This is less critical in the uh, PS2 and PSP versions of the game, where she doesn't really hit as hard, so I'm not overly concerned about keeping her... Uh, Offense to a minimum. Ooh, pretty nasty damage there uh, on the protagonist. But we just need to switch to a more powerful and ideally more durable persona. Let's see here. Omaraki. Uh, Omaraki is a little bit stronger and has the same endurance as... Uh, oh, and he has Tarunda. You know what? I should probably... Oh, wait. Hold on. Is he weak to ice? No, he's not. Okay. I was just keeping uh, track of that. So let's uh, hit this uh, priestess with Garu. I do need to be a little bit faster in my decision making there, so I'm probably going to be mashing through a lot of these menus very quickly. Uh, we do want to undo a little bit of that damage there since I got hit pretty hard. Junpei's got a pretty simple game plan going here. He's just going to keep hitting the boss with Power Slash over and over and over. Invitation to Chaos? What the? Monorail starting to shake. Oh dear. Okay, so we have a lot less time to work with than I thought here. Uh, the boss in this version of the game has the unique Invitation to Chaos move, which severely cuts the time you have left in order to defeat it. So we definitely have to keep up our pressure going here. We can't have any turn where we aren't dealing at least a little damage to the boss. So again, just keep hitting, hitting, hitting. If we're lucky, Junpei might score a crit. Not guaranteed, but we can hope, we can hope. Alright, so we've got some enemies here. What we want to do is hit the one on the right with Garu. Take that out, no problem. And then we want to hit the one on the left with either a slash attack or a fire attack. There we go. Uh, let's uh, hit this one again with another slash attack. We will have uh, Yukari, Garu, the one on the right. Take that one out, no problem. Uh-oh. I did make a slight mistake there. I should have used Tarunda on the boss. Uh, let me see here. Uh, bah, 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 bah. we'll, uh, just, uh, hit this one to take it out. Let's see what she does here. Her attack's reverted. Okay, so she does another summon. This third one is weak to ice. Uh, let me see here. Do I have ice? Uh, let me see. I'm gonna have to switch to Orpheus for this one to ice it down. We will hit it. Take care of that. And then we'll want to hit the boss with Tarunda. When Yukari's turn comes around, we can finish off the, uh, Shadow and not have to worry about it. Okay, so a little bit of a misplay from me there, but it ended up not being a big deal. Okay, hit this one with Garu. Ooh, that one's resistant. We're gonna have to have Junpei take it out, but uh, we really don't want the boss to have any help going. Here comes the Buffala. Little bit of damage there on the protagonist. Unfortunately, the freeze status actually robs us of our ability to. Uh, do anything in this version of the game. The free status really doesn't seem to do much in Persona 3 FES or Persona 3 Portable. I believe it just disables your evasion. Possibly you take more damage when you're inflicted with it. I'm really not sure. Okay, so a little uh, unfortunate there, but uh, nothing too bad. So let's switch back over to Anmaraki. Uh, we'll have uh, Yukari do another Medea there. With the greater endurance from Anmaraki, I'm not too worried about the damage the boss can deal here. We'll get another Medea up. Again, really lucky that I got Medea at the start of this video. I actually was not accounting for that. And with some of my misplays, we could have been running into some problems here. But fortunately, we're doing quite well. Here comes another Invitation to Chaos. We're also going to want to hit the boss with Tarunda again to keep that debuff going. It's okay, it's okay. I don't have any damage to undo here. So let's hit her with Tarunda. And then I think next turn I might actually uh, get Rakunda going on her uh, in order to up the damage that me and Junpei are dealing to her. But again, you just want to menu super fast here. I believe that's the last time she uses Invitation to Chaos, so now we just have to keep up the pressure. Here comes Eerie Sound. Luckily, we all dodged that. Okay, perfect opportunity to hit her with Rakunda and uh, just bring her defense down a ton. Now, like I said, we want to keep up the pressure, keep up the pressure, just keep it going. Hit her with Garu. 
And always pay attention to the uh, icons for uh, the debuffs that you got on her. When they start flashing, that's when they mean they're about to expire, so be mindful of that. Here comes an Ice Storm with the Tarunda and better endurance on my part. We don't have to worry too, too much about the damage that that deals. The debuffs are still in play. We'll hit her with Garu. Yukari can Medea us, and we should be fine there. Honestly, Medea's healing outpaces the uh, damage of Ice Storm. So we shouldn't have to worry too, too much about that. Medea's healing also does wonders to offset the HP cost of Junpei's power slashes. Okay, so we got these enemies here. I'm actually going to do a little bit of a thing here. So first order of business is use a Maragi gem. We've got these. May as well use them. Oh, I've got a sworn that that one must be the ice resistant one. Luckily, uh, we do know this one is, uh, or the ice weak one. Okay, so she pulled that one out a little bit randomly there. Let's see. Got her. Okay. We're actually just going to have to let that one uh, persist for a little bit, but it shouldn't be a big deal. Hit her with another power slash. If we were really lucky, Junpei would get a crit there. Here comes Koha. Ooh, that's a... Oh, no! That's a disaster. I uh, did not know that would happen. Whoops. Okay, this time I played it a little bit smarter, and I'm doing uh, a bit better on the fight here, so uh, we want to be a bit more mindful of uh, what weaknesses I can actually hit when she summons these things in. Uh, that was a pretty big misplay on my part. Let me see. I only had the one Maragi gem. I've already used that, so let me see here. Uh, we can, uh, what is it, uh, assist? And there we go. We can uh, boofu this one over here. And since that one has access to the light spells, we better just uh, whack it, take it out. Uh, bag it up, throw it out in the trash, we'll have Yukari Izagaru here, and then uh, we'll have Junpei just uh, hit with another Power Slash. The defense debuff should be going down this turn, but that's not a big deal, because I can just cast that at the start of my next turn. Here comes the Ice Storm. As long as we have uh, the Tarunda in effect, that is just not a big deal at all. Speaking of uh, debuffs, uh, actually, I think Tarunda is about to expire. So we're going to do a little bit less damage uh, going forward, but we've weakened her enough that it's not going to matter too much. But we absolutely, absolutely need to give, keep that attack drop going if we want to stay on top of her damage. I think at this point it would just be prudent for me to have uh, Yukari just keep spamming Medea and then have uh, Junpei and the protagonist keep working on keeping the damage coming out. Luckily, she can't really do much to us in terms of her own damage at this point. Freezing us would be a little bit unfortunate, but uh, that should not be a huge concern. We will now throw out our own power slashes since, uh, ooh, that's actually quite weak. Not a big deal, though. Junpei, he's the man. He can keep up the pressure. It's worth noting, uh, you'll notice that we have Bash in our moveset. Uh, the different uh, Tier 1 uh, physical moves aren't actually any degree of power uh, better or worse than each other. Uh, they just uh, hit different elements. But there we go. Boss defeated. And we got the High Priestess Tarot card. So interesting stuff obtained there. I have to wonder what that does. I am quite embarrassed that I died there, but uh, I did not know that that thing had Koha spells. And I just so happened to have a persona that was weak to that. Whoops. All right, time to take the Priestess down in FES. I ended up losing like a minute because I ran into some Cupids who kept garrowing me down. So uh, well, this might uh, end up being a little bit tighter than it usually is for me, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, now, the Priestess does much less damage in this version of the game, so I'm not really concerned about keeping Tarunda up on her, and I don't even think I have it in this version of the game, actually, so that would be a non-starter either way. But as you can see, we deal way, way more damage to her. I'll probably scan her just to uh, get uh, her stats on the board for the heck of it, but she really is not that threatening. Uh, let me see here. We got two muttering tiaras here. I forget if these guys are weak to anything. Uh, okay, so that one is immune to fire. Hopefully uh, we can take these guys out. No problem. Ah, uh, oh, crap. If we're lucky, Junpei would get a crit, but he did not, so uh, we are not lucky there. Okay, so they're pretty resistant to a lot of things, but they use their own fire magic. The Priestess, as you can see, just repels ice skills, so she's not that big of a threat. Here comes a Bufu, which is something we don't have to worry too, too much about. I'm actually going to put Yukari onto healing gear, just to keep ourselves topped off there while we try to uh, take down these uh, muttering tiaras to simplify the flow of battle. Okay, so that one was able to resist that damage pretty well, but that inspires Junpei to target it. Oh, jeez. 
This is uh, actually going to be a pretty interesting fight. It's going pretty poorly for me. Kulimpa. That is actually not a terribly threatening status effect in this game. You go for a slash attack there. Nothing bad happened to us there. Pierce attack from the Priestess. She hits pretty hard, but nothing I'm overly concerned about. Let's bash down that other muttering tiara. Get out of the way. Once these guys are out of the picture, we can just focus on the tiara on her lonesome. Junpei decides to use up one of his uh, stocks of medical powders on himself, which is something I'd rather he not do, but it's not a big deal. Okay, slash attack from the Muttering Tiara. Defense reverted on the Priestess, but we can just, uh, actually, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to uh, change it up a little bit here. Uh, now that we've only got the one Muttering Tiara, let's focus on the Priestess. Let's get the Rakunda back onto her, and uh, Yukari should heal up Junpei, since she has the relatively greater amount of HP remaining. Yeah. All right, let's focus on her. Again, I'm not overly concerned about uh, what the Muttering Tiara can do now. We really just want to focus on uh, layering as much damage as possible onto the Priestess. The Muttering Tiara, as you can see, doesn't really deal that much in the way of damage. Okay, and what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to uh, uh, assign the target of the Priestess to Yukari, and I'm going to whip out, uh, let me see, uh, Orpheus here, and we're going to use Cadenza to heal ourselves up. This is the only form of multi-targeting healing we have in this version of the game, so we have to keep this option in mind, and this is why I wanted to keep Orpheus in tow. Remember, at this stage of the game, we don't have the compendium, so if I fuse off Orpheus, we can't get him back. A little bit of an unfortunate miss from Junpei there, but nothing that should affect us too adversely. As long as we keep up the pressure with Yukari and Junpei, Muddy Tiara healing uh, the Priestess there is a little unfortunate. It, but it shouldn't be that big a deal. Uh, I'm actually going to have uh, Mitsuru scan these guys just to see if they have a weakness that we can exploit. Let's uh, bring uh, Aramitama back out and let's uh, keep up the assault. Oh, no! That was not who I wanted to hit. Damn it! I'm uh, actually running pretty late on time here. I usually finish this fight off much sooner than this. A uh, bit unusual from me, but whatever. It's not a huge deal. We should be able to outpace the healing of these Muttering Tiaras if they decide to heal her. And yes, uh, they are ignoring her, so that's not... Okay, they're weak to ice. That's actually very handy for me to know. Also kind of funny. Hey, that's lucky for us. Limpa, that's an interesting option from her. But it shouldn't matter at this point. Now that that one's knocked down, it's lost its turn. So we can just focus on uh, taking down the Priestess now. Junpei will just go for a normal slash attack, which at this stage of the game is much weaker than his physical skills. But uh, later in the game, that uh, relationship will actually reverse a little bit. That's actually one of the poorer uh, attempts I've had at that fight before, but we still came in with uh, more than a minute remaining. We get a diamond and a whole bunch of experience, plus some uh, level ups to go with it. And now for the fight in Persona 3 Portable. Though honestly, this one is not going to be super interesting, because we are a lot stronger in Portable than we are in FES, and uh, since I'm doing this one last, I fully understand how the fight works now, so uh, we should have this pretty under wraps. One notable thing that is going to be much different in this version is that Yukari has access to the Wind Bracers at this point, giving her an extra 25% to her damage. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, uh, Priestess is not looking so hot here. We're already kind of bodying her. I've also got a lot more time to work with, and in general, Persona 3 Portable plays a bit faster than FES, so the time limit is really not much of a factor here. I'm going to knock down both of these guys, and then I'm going to kill one of them with a follow-up Bufu spell. Uh, unlike Persona 3 FES, where if I was playing that fight a bit more smartly, I would be knocking them down, but not killing them, so that I would just be robbing them, them of their turn, essentially removing them from the fight, but disallowing uh, Priestess from summoning more of them. But uh, we're just going to do it this way. Uh, once again, Freeze doesn't really seem to do anything that helpful in this version of the game, so I wouldn't even really consider it much of a factor. We should actually be able to finish off the Priestess this turn, depending on what the Tiara does. It decided to heal itself and be selfish, so uh, the Priestess uh, is going to die. Uh, let's see here. Do we have a uh, Potra Gem? Yes, we do. Eventually, I'm going to buy some uh, status cures from the pharmacy, just a handful of every single status cure in the game, so that I can more reliably cover for that, and jeez, I am having terrible luck. Uh, you don't usually miss this much with magic. 
So, unfortunately, the Priestess gonna get a little bit of healing, but it really is not going to help. Oh my god! Well... <laughs> Okay, this fight's gonna go on a little bit longer. Uh, that is a good example of something that I wanted to address in Persona 3 Portable that I did not yet have a chance to really talk about, and that is critical hits. In the Maniac difficulty of Persona 3 Portable, bosses get, well, enemies in general, get massive damage uh, bonuses on critical hits. Like, normally you're supposed to get like a 50% bonus on critical hits in Persona 3, uh, in Maniac Mode, bosses and enemies get a 150% bonus on their critical hit damage, which makes bosses that use multi-targeting physical attacks some of the most annoying and luck-based fights in the game, which we're going to see one in particular that might become pretty perilous if I don't uh, get lucky with it, but that's when we'll cover it later. For now, we get the 300 experience and the diamond once again. This should give us another cascade of level ups. Get in time! Hey, wait! Why are we still moving? We're going too fast! We need to put on the brakes or... What are you waiting for? You're coming up on the next train fast! Damn it! I don't know how to stop this thing! Did... Did we stop? Uh, I think so. Do you read me? Is everyone all right? Uh, yeah. We're okay. <laughs> my, my knees are shaking. Dude, I'm like, drenched in sweat. <sighs> it sounds like you're safe. I'm sorry I couldn't do more to help on my end. I don't detect any more shadows. Well done. You can come on back now. Wait, how did you know which one was the break? Look at the swag walk back in FES. Uh, lucky guess. Are you shitting me? Uh, you know what? Never mind. Anyone want to grab a bite to eat on the way? I'm freaking starving. Our team survived another dangerous fight. It feels like our trust in each other has deepened. And indeed, we get something resembling material gain in order to substantiate that. Rank 3 of the Fool Social Link has been acquired. Now, cutting over to FES, there is actually something else we get in addition to the Social Link. We get... It seems the level of trust between you all has grown. You learned a new tactic. You can now use Conserve SP. For the first few major bosses we get, we defeat in the game, we gain new tactics that allow us to give better control, or rather, uh, better command over our party members, so that they can act more in a line with what we actually want to do. Some of these are very useful, but this first one, Conserve SP, eh, I don't use this one too often. Uh, Hardly at all, actually. This just makes it so that your party members will not use any skills that uh, consume SP. Generally, this will cause them to default to their basic physical attack, unless they're a physical fighter, in which case they'll probably be more focused on using their HP-consuming physical skills. It's situationally useful, but I don't use it too often. Did, did we stop? Uh, I think so. Is everybody alright? Uh... Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> My knees are shaking. Dude, I'm like drenched in sweat. Hey, are you okay? Seriously? Yeesh, you're a real tomboy. I'm so glad you're safe. I'm sorry I couldn't do more on my end. I don't detect any more shadows. You guys did a great job, so come on home. But, how did you know which one was the break? You serious? Ah, uh, whatever. You wanna grab a bite to eat? 
I'm freaking hungry. Uh, hate to break it to you, Junpei, but girls usually don't get hungry in the middle of the night. Mmm, I wouldn't mind stopping by a corner store, though. Now in Persona 3 Portable, we also get a bonus for the Social Link rank up, though it's a different one than what we get in Persona 3 FES. Our tactics do not expand in our options, but we can now perform a double team attack. These are like the co-op strikes in uh, Persona 4, although you don't get the unique ones like Chie's famous galactic punt. Instead, this is just a guaranteed critical attack that sometimes randomly happens when you knock down an enemy in battle. It's not all Always helpful, but it can occasionally come in handy. It's me. Reporting in from the scene, we've just finished up over here. The monorail did not sustain any noticeable damage. A job well done, Kirijo kun. Huh, when I heard they hijacked a monorail, I feared the worst. Excellent work taking care of that. Now I don't have to worry about tomorrow's headlines. The team did a great job. They've learned a lot in a surprisingly short time. But what was up with the shadows? They've never done something like hijacking a train before. This is getting out of hand. I'll be looking into the matter. Does this mean it's begun? Let's not jump to any conclusions. For now, we should study their behavior for patterns or clues. We can't afford to keep waiting for them to make the first move. If only I had more power, things wouldn't be so difficult for everyone. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing fine. More importantly, do you have anything to drink, Sanada-kun? Huh? Why do you look so tired, Ikutsuki-san? Wait... Don't tell me that bicycle outside is yours. Boy, am I going to be sore tomorrow. The boy from my dreams warned me about a hardship. Seems like his prediction came true. I wonder what this could mean. I'm too exhausted to make any sense of it right now. I should rest as soon as I get back to the dorm. Oh, Zeller. Were you able to get some rest after last night? I apologize for the trouble, but I'm counting on you. And don't worry, Akiko will be rejoining the front line soon enough as well. That aside, don't forget the exams are coming up, so why don't you take today to relax a little? And I think that would be a bang-up idea, except that we've got social links and other various tax tasks to advance. But that was quite a lot for a single video. Now, at this point in Persona 3 Lo Reload and Persona 3 Portable, we just have the freedom to do whatever we want on this fine Sunday. But in Persona 3 FES, on the other hand... First and foremost, whenever we complete a full moon operation in FES and Portable, we gain the tiredness status due to the intense nature of the battle that we just faced. This isn't always uh, the most useful thing in the world uh, later in the game, but for right now, when we're still working on our courage, it's only a boon. Though, of course, we'll have to save scum to keep uh, the tiredness carrying into the weekday. First things first, though, is that we get a call on our cell phone. When that hotline blings, you know what it means. It's Elizabeth. I'm calling to inform you of a change in Tartarus. I believe a path that was blocked is now open. I thought you would like to know. I wish you a safe journey. Interesting. The phone call has ended. But that's not all that we have on Sunday. Certainly not enough to warrant cutting to FES. But if you remember... We organized a little meetup with Kazushi, so we have to leave and go honor our agreement. Now, you can actually double book days, and this will actually have uh, effects regarding the uh, neglect system when it comes to social links. I believe it uh, hits you with a penalty for the number of days you can ignore a social link before you can pursue it again, which can push them to reversing. 
But you can only uh, back out on a date if you uh, had double booked. Uh, otherwise, if you've only uh, if you're only committed to one thing, you're just forced to go on the one, and you can't back out of it. Dude, I stand out like a sore thumb with my warm-up suit on. I guess it'll make me mentally tough. Kazushi seems calm. I'm not trying to bag on myself or anything. This calm exterior is just an illusion. I get really nervous before competitions. I've been getting better, getting better lately, though. Kazushi seems a little embarrassed. I get even more nervous when I think about winning. Let's see here. What is the choice that we want for this? Winning isn't everything, Kazushi. So you're telling me to give up? I don't know if I can do that, man. But I know where you're coming from. And he appreciated that. Now, this is not a social link. Today, your friendship has grown stronger. Your relationship could become stronger soon. It would have uh, been at that stage regardless if we went on this or not, but we needed to answer that phone call to keep things moving at the right pace, so we had no choice but to go on this date. I'm sorry, hangout, no homo, right? But uh, the date events with all the different characters in the game actually have their own unique little scenarios and dialogue options. Uh, I'm not sure if it's tied to like uh, going to specific uh, or accepting specific invitations, or if any of these happen to repeat. Uh, I've never really looked into it too deeply, because for the most part in FES and Portable, it does not matter that much. The system mattered a lot more in Persona 3 Vanilla. Anyways, with that done, we now get the evening to ourselves, if nothing else, and it's actually going to be a bit before we return to Tartarus in FES. We'll be going back sooner in Reload, though. For now, though, that's where I'd like to end the video. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I I hope to see you in the next one. Until then though, goodbye.